Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into a little podcast with Alf, Cleomance, and Mark. So these are three people we talk about New World quite a bit on this channel, and we want to go over some different rumors today. So there's been some people out there data mining quite a bit. We have our buddy Marks here. Marks, if you want to give yourself a quick shout out, uh, maybe tell people where to follow you, and uh, they can look up more info on you. Uh, hi, thank you. My name is Mark. Um, I am posting on Reddit as M4RX. That is also my Twitch handle. And my Twitter is uh, Bear Like Lion. My wife also just got accepted to the New World Creator Content Content Creator Program, and she streams on Twitch as Karina Machina. Awesome. All right. Well, what about you, Cleo? Hey, everyone. My name is Cleo Menace. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Cleo Menace. Uh, big fan of the game. Uh, played a lot of preview and just really looking forward to uh, making New World the game that I stream. He's actually one of the guys I got originally that Rapier Firestaff build from. He has about 5K hours into the alpha and uh, definitely one of the best to do it. So now we have our buddy Alf. He played with me through obviously Albion Online. You guys seen a lot of that. And now he's uh, you know one of my biggest duos in New World. So Alf, you can kick it off here. Oh, how's it going? Um, come from a pretty heavy set PvP background and uh, currently enjoying the game. Well, not currently anymore now that it's ended, but um, just having a lot of fun with it and you know, experiencing, trying out new different builds and seeing what we can do with them from there. So I'll have links for all of their YouTubes and their Twitches and their Twitters or whatever else. All social media is down in the description below. So if you guys want to check them out, definitely do so. Uh, we're just going to go through some of the stuff we data mine. So the first off, we do have the MTX store. So uh, Marks, if you want to start us off with just telling us what we learned from the MTX store, what's, uh, you know, what's I guess, there for us to really talk about? Um, so the microtransaction store has been pretty interesting, especially they made a blog post of detailing it after getting some backlash from a previous alpha. Specifically, they mention it will be cosmetic only until at least 2022. Uh, yeah, so we don't know what their plans are going to be after that, per se. None of that's in the game as of now. Um, but interesting stuff I did manage to data mine is there will be an optional Steam subscription. I don't know what benefits that'll bring. Uh, there will be potentially purchasable character slots for regions uh, to have more than four characters. And there will be some rewards for Prime Gaming subscribers and uh, potential Twitch drops. Okay. So none of that sounds too bad in my opinion. What do you guys think about that? Because honestly, as long as it stays cosmetic, in my opinion, it's not going to be a deal breaker. Definitely with what they originally came out with talking about, you know, fast traveling, uh, you know, benefits and things like that, that could definitely break the game. Um, but, you know, do you have any thoughts on that, Cleo or Alf? I think it's fine. Um, 2022, it's only going to be a short uh, three, four months after release. So by that time, it has no impact on the initial leveling race or who gets a city or anything like that. So yeah, as long yeah. As there's no pay to win there. It's good by me. Yeah. I, th I think that's the only, the, probably the only thing that a lot of people really are hoping for because they, as they have promised that there wasn't going to be any pay to win option, things that will put you too far ahead. And like Cleo said, it advance you to uh, getting territories and things like that, that you shouldn't be able to get without paying or whatever. Right, so the balance is going to still be there. Obviously, MTX Store is not going to change that, which is definitely good for now. Obviously, they could sneak stuff in. Uh, do I do want to put out a disclaimer? Uh, you know, all this stuff could change. Obviously, this was data mined with the pre uh, the prior build in mind. So, you know, by release, the, this could literally all change. So, keep that in mind. Uh, but we do have a lot more to talk about coming into. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have much more to say about the store, but we do have dungeons and PVE arenas next, and that's going to be a uh, pretty fun one to talk about. So. Um, Marks, do you have anything else to say on the store? I, I'm very comfortable with the store, and I think it's going to really change their plans depending on their revenue. Um, if if they're doing great on a cosmetic-only store, I will see them keeping that for the next year or so. I see a lot of people concerned that the armors in-game may look better than dropped equipment. Um, I, I necessarily don't feel that way. They kind of say they're trying to keep it on par. There is one armor set that I think looks really cool. Uh, I think it was... The Guardian, I can't recall. I posted some screenshots of it up to Reddit. Yeah, no, and I saw what you said, um, or I saw what you mean about that. I did see a lot of people talking about how some armor won't feel as rewarding because it doesn't look as cool that you can, you know, just go out and buy that armor. Um, so you did, you know, all this gameplay uh, or hours of, you know, doing these dungeons, and uh, then you can just go and buy it instead. I, I see what they're talking about there, but like I said, cosmetics, uh, definitely something I'm okay with. And like you said, there is, you know, just... 
you know, for the most part, there is a lot of unique, uh, you know, armor sets out there that are still just as cool in game. So definitely cool to uh, touch on that. But I do want to touch on dungeons now. So right now we do have six released dungeons, I believe. Um, we've talked about all of those dungeons, you know, having a Amarine. I think we have Starstone. Um, if we continue on, what else do we have? We have the Depths. I think we have uh, the Shipyard. Uh I can't think of um, let me, let Lazarus, me Instrumentality, Garden of Genesis, yep, Shipyard, okay. Depths, Shattered, and Amarine. Yep, so we have six right now, and we have uh, you know five that are unreleased according to your data mining. Do you have anything to say about that, Marks? Uh, it's, it's been pretty interesting poking through. A lot of them are in zones already in-game, uh, so I think they're going to be added as additional content later down the line. Uh, I have the title and descriptions and objectives for all these dungeons. Uh, but I, I like walk this tightrope of spoiler territory because I don't want to like explain here are the mechanics you have to do, but I do want to like get people excited for potential dungeons in the Great Cleave. <laughs> right, and that's definitely something that we're all excited for. Do you have a? Uh, I guess you post on Reddit quite a bit um, about this data mining. Uh, you can always send me the links after the show, and I can um, you know get these guys the links. So if they want to look at more into some of your posts and uh, more information, we can definitely do so without trying to spoil too much. Um, do you guys think the dungeons right now are in a pretty good state? Do you guys think they're boring? Do you guys think that uh, they give rewards you fairly well? Or what's your thoughts on those? Sure, yeah. I think early games, some of the dungeons, um, they, they do a decent job of introducing mechanics to uh, maybe MMO players who aren't used to this style of game. Um, there have been some complaints about the PvE being too easy or some of the dungeons being too buggy, but they recently made a lot of it harder. And if you don't have a Holy Trinity-like group, or have taunt gems, uh, you're going to be in for a rough time. And uh, some of the mechanics, especially in the depths too, and Lazarus instrumentality, more of those 40 to, to 60 end game dungeon ranges, uh, are seeing a lot of cool mechanics, a lot of one shot mechanics, and a lot of interesting things that you need to dodge. So I think they're on their way to uh, developing really good dungeons and raid content. Yeah, I completely agree because uh, just before the beta ended, me and Graphic and uh, Padme, we tried to do a uh, the Ivan scale one, I believe it's uh, shipyard. That shipyard? Believe, yep. Yeah, Dynasty yeah. Shipyard. Yeah, first time I'm doing it, and I mean, there was some crazy stuff that I've never seen before, and it was pretty challenging. A lot of one-shot mechanics, I'll definitely say that. Yeah, it was very cool. Uh, we did have some uh, lower levels, but we had a lot of cool mechanics with cannons, obviously, coming out of the side, and then you have people shooting you on the ship. Uh, just rotations that you're going to have to learn if you are maybe under-leveled or you know, just going there. Uh, for the first time. So I think that's definitely cool. I think the dungeons are in a pretty good spot, obviously, starting with Amarine being one of the most basics and then kind of ramping it up. And I, you know, I haven't done myself the 65 dungeons yet, which I'm very looking forward to doing in the uh, full release. But uh, Cleo, have you done some of those later dungeons or Mark, have you done either one of those? Uh, yes. Yeah. I've done all the dungeons. You've done every single dungeon. Uh, nice. Yeah. Every single dungeon so far. So um, tested every single one. Uh, my personal favorite two are Garden Genesis and Lazarus Instrumentality. Uh, the boss fights there, just when they introduce them, is pretty much unlike any other monster. Um, and they've been working pretty uh, hard at mob variety and boss variety. So, yeah, so I saw those fights going from being pretty easy to then ended up getting to be pretty hard with some. some yeah, they definitely camps, ramped so. it up in like that, uh, you know, what you would suggest for them to ramp it up in that kind of speed. So. Uh, Mark, did you say you actually, did you ever have time to actually jump in and do that high level gameplay? I don't know if you ever got a chance during the alpha or anything. Uh, I didn't plan any of the alphas. I only started a couple of days into closed beta, but in particular with uh, our company, we kind of had this agreement where we were sticking to starting zones and okay. we were stopping after Amrine so we don't spoil anything going forward. That's not a bad idea at all. We actually talked about doing that me and Alpha ourselves, but uh, we, we got ahead of ourselves and jumped all the way to, like you said, like we said, the shipyard and struggled along there, through there as lower levels. But I do want to talk about the PVE arenas as well, because, you know, we do have two released right now um, and we also have one unreleased. So if you guys have anything more to say about the dungeons or are we good to move on to the PVE arenas? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd sort of like to bring up a couple things about the dungeons. Yeah. Um, so so I, I went through the, the, the new data mine dungeons and it was a little uh, difficult to figure out where... Uh, Aridin, I can't want to say this, Aridin Anus Caverns, uh, I think it's in the Restless Shore. Um, and then there's a dungeon in Cutlass Keys called Barnacles and Black Powder. Uh, two dungeons in the Great Cleave, the Frozen Passage and the Unholy Depths. And then a dungeon in a zone that is not re yet released called the Enade. Oh, sweet. Um, and additionally, so th this was something that was mentioned to me. I, I got this big image of stuff I missed in a data mine and I was trying to corroborate it. Uh, but they mentioned dungeon mutations. 
So there are two scaling difficulties for each dungeon, um, tier one and tier two. Nice. And the mutators oh, wow. are Hellfire, Magus, and Windstorm. Um, so I don't know what this means, what it affects, but there are achievements for completing these dungeons at a higher difficulty. And they are for all dungeons that are, have been found in the game right now. Uh, I don't know exactly what it entails. My guess is they'll probably bump everything in the dungeon up to level 60 or 65, maybe make everything elite, maybe add a new mechanic. Well, that's definitely oh. unique to the MMO, uh, uh, in my opinion, the MMO uh, scene altogether. So definitely cool to hear that. Um, that <laughs> that's very exciting, obviously, for a lot of people. You know, dungeons weren't even a thing, you know, less than a year ago, unless they were doing it behind the okay. scenes and we didn't know about it. So quite a bit of an upgrade from what we were previously given as far as PvE goes. It does seem like they're trying to add an expedition into each territory, which I think is kind of cool on its own. There's certain territories that he mentioned that don't really have anything really else off to, to offer other than just resources and just uh, right. quest lines in the territory. It's nice that they have dungeons, and yeah, it seems to be like they're trying to get one in every single uh, territory. Is that what we have right now, Marks? It looks like we have a dungeon in almost every territory coming out. Not exactly. Um, I don't think there's, besides the... Um, Windsward and Everfall dungeons. I don't think the other starting zones have any. Oh, okay. Um, and Great Cleave has two dungeons inside of it, and I believe oh, wow. um, yeah. Restless Shores has two dungeons inside of it. Well, there are open world dungeons in every territory, but not uh, the instance that we're all traditionally used to. Right. Yeah. So. There's like a elite areas, but this specifically is part of the expedition code. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay, so now let's go into, I guess, that PvE arenas, because that's something I haven't actually got to do in the game as well. You know, the 65 dungeons, I haven't gotten, you know, to actually take advantage of that. But I heard that, you know, the Spriggan was actually locked on this beta. I heard people weren't able to actually do that. Um, was that, I don't know if, did you guys have a chance yet? Or, you know, I would say, Cleo, did you have a chance specifically to do both of those two released PvE arenas yet? Uh, yes. I think everyone from Preview 2 uh, might remember the uh, Corrupted Spriggan. Two, so there's uh, Eating Grove Spriggan, Corrupted Spriggan, and then I call it the Mushroom Spriggan. A little bit different, uh, totally different model, totally different abilities, and uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but um, it's been pretty interesting. And then there's another one in another endgame zone uh, that is a different mob type, and, and the audio in that fight is quite possibly some of the best I've heard in any video game. Wow. And the audio are the, the cues to her attacks. It's very interesting. It's almost like listening to an opera performance while fighting a boss. It's really, really good. And I think um, they really captured that Dark Souls Monster Hunter essence with these arenas. And uh, hopefully we'll be on our way to uh, even bigger boss fights, maybe in the open world. Right. Maybe 50, 100 people. Who knows? Yeah. And hey, what level do you need to be to do some of those uh, PvE arenas? Do you think there's um, like a level range that you would suggest? Because I haven't actually done it myself, so I haven't been able to suggest anything to anybody. Unless they changed it, I'm pretty sure they drop uh, from keys or quests. You know, okay. I don't want to give away too much, but um, so I think as long as you have the key, you're good. Now, if you complete it or not, that's a different story. If you want to bring lower levels and try to roll the dice with your lower level friends, but uh, <laughs> definitely should probably maybe be 60. 60 is probably the, okay. That sounds good. Uh, do you have anything to add, Marks or Alpha? Um, the dungeons seem interesting, so I, I had reread their blog post on it where they talk about the Mono, Monocheus Cleft, uh, the Spriggan boss. Yeah. Uh, so it seems to be that you fight mobs in the, in the world, you drop key pieces, I don't know if you craft the key or you just get the key, uh, but then you take your five-man group and you go into a dungeon or the arena and it is a one-off boss fight that is timed. You have an X amount of minutes to kill this boss or you lose. Wow. Okay, is that at, I mean, Cleo, is that the case, yeah, I guess, when you, you, you have yep. a specific time, you have to beat it in or you lose. Okay. So you definitely have to bring your damage. You can't just play safe and have, you know, a couple tanks and oh, healers sure. just to make sure you get through it. I like no that they're shot. going hard, kind of hardcore through this content, you know, with the PVE. Uh, it's not just, you know, pushover. Um, you know, as, as we move closer uh, to the Brimstone, Sands, and Data Mind map, I think that's going to be one that a lot of people are excited about, just kind of the expansion of the entire uh, you know, Eternum altogether. Do we know where Brimstone Sands is going to actually be, Marks? Yes. Uh, it's. Let me find the actual map. It's like northwest. Northwest. Um, right between the Great Cleave and Ebonscale Reach. Awesome. And that's going to be another 60 zone, I would presume? 
I assume so. I, I'm not certain. Uh, there was some fun. Someone managed to find an invincibility bug in the closed beta, where if you drowned yourself underwater and did an animation, it wouldn't kill you, but you were considered dead. And they ran through the Great Barrier Wall that kills you if you cross it and explored some of the new Brimstone Sands area. Uh, it's pretty unique. It has... Uh, I, I feel like the developers kind of anticipated this. It's this giant sharp plateau that you have to like climb up and in order to enter the zone. Very interesting. I uh, see so you've seen the gameplay yourself then of the person doing that. I, I watched the video. There, there's some. It was in a different language, so I don't know if um, if they had named like objects right. like ca- there are cactuses and um, it's a desert, and then it's got like a big watering hole. But there's no spawnable mobs there. It does have some interactables. Do you think uh, that'll? Re- I guess. Do you think that'll introduce you know new resources in that zone? Just because, like you said, there's cactuses, maybe some different resources, or did you find anything uh, to do with resources at all when you were going through it? Yeah, uh, nothing pointing to that. I mean, they can expand it. They can add extra tiers. I think we're at tier 5 right now uh, in the game for launch. But I see this as... uh, So that was one of the things I was pointing to, is there's going to potentially be a dungeon in this new zone. Oh, okay. That'd be sweet. Do you guys have any thoughts on uh, really expansion on a term? Do you think we need to have a bigger map, or do you think our size right now is actually good for launch in, you know, I guess the next six months? They were talking about uh, the servers being one anywhere from 1,500 to 3,500 people, and the eventual target is 10,000 uh, people a server. So, wow. I mean, I think I think in terms of the big open world that, that we were able to experience in beta, um, we kind of really saw the fun you could have in this game, how they just had these great stealth mechanics. So I think the world would have to be bigger to support that many people, for sure. A lot. Really big. Um, you know, but little by little, I mean, they could always just increase server size or, you know, I mean, no one wants to merge the clusters, obviously, but it, it definitely could get bigger, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, expansions down the road, they have already, you know, suggested that that's a possibility. So do you think this will be a part of an an expansion uh, where you have to buy or purchase, you know, this zone or this area? Or do you think this is just, you know, part of the game, you're you're getting this experience when you buy that, you know, $40 game? We can't say for certain, uh, but my insight is they're probably not going to charge for zones um, because of how technically the map is laid out. They would have to have a way for you to enter a zone to check if you have entitlement for that zone, and there doesn't seem to be a system for that in the game yet. Okay. Uh, So from the presumed data mine of the stuff that's... So so also how the engine handles maps is pretty unique. Uh, All maps are split into like uh, 256-sized territories, and then they're combined together in order based on their numerical ID. So data mining, it's very difficult because I have to pull 16 different map files and then try to piece it together in Photoshop. (laughs) <laughs> no, it doesn't sound easy to me, but uh, that's sweet. I mean, obviously, a lot of us want to get as much content as possible out of this $40 we're spending. It's not about the money. It's just about the idea that they're not trying to nickel and dime every single person for every part of the game. So uh, definitely cool to see you know new zones coming to the game, new zones coming to the map altogether and continuing to grow a turn them. Do you guys have anything more to add to that? Yeah, there's there's so much for them to do with zones in this, in this game just from the story alone. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if you've been up to like Eden Grove. Yeah. So, so Eden Grove internally in the code is kind of referenced as uh, an Asian-inspired zone, and it's got a lot of Asian themes to it and a sort of uh, landscape to it, and they can do zones based on specific time periods and specific like nationalities. Wow. Yeah, that would definitely be cool to continue to see you know, that take place across. Uh, do we know what kind of theme we have for Brimstone besides, obviously, like you said, desert cactuses? Uh, just expect that pretty much? Or? Yeah, for the most part. Scorpions, maybe. Um, there's there's a few things like I said there there's an a dungeon there that seems pretty yeah, unique um, compared to the other dungeons it, it's just got some localization stuff some strings that kind of reference that you may be like there may be a portal there that and the description's like we don't know what's on the other side of the Anubis portal okay uh, Anubis portal so uh, yeah definitely Egyptian yeah makes sense yeah or uh, maybe there... some new monster types like a new bites or uh, Sphinx maybe. Have you seen anything about like a continuing of the main quest, like into that territory? Is that what you're assuming? So I was I was looking into the main quest today, and I believe the main quest will finish in the zones we have now. Okay. 
it, it's a little jarring and confusing to kind of go through because it's sort of out of order. I have to like piece it together and make sense of it all. Um, but I wish they did a way better job at explaining some of this main quest stuff because I just clicked through it on beta and now I'm super interested in the lore going through all this data mine information. Well, yeah, we're definitely yeah. glad to have you on the show to, you know, to kind of talk about this. I mean, this is a lot of information a lot of people would not have known without your help and obviously the people helping you, you know, find this information. Uh, so let's, I mean, if, unless you guys have more to talk about on the zones, I want to get over to that gear score tier and the HWM, which is the high watermark and uh, really how that works and what you found about, uh, really about that gear score. So, so that's an interesting one. Um, and, and I can only view what the client has. I can't necessarily see how the server is giving out loot. But right. in general, um, essentially every 10 levels is a tier. And a tier starts at 150 and goes to 510. So when you hit like 50, 60, your gear score kind of gets capped around 510. And then similar to games like Destiny 2 or Vermintide 2, you've got to grind from 510 to 600. Yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. And then you said, um, you know, talking about the really just the gear score idea of you have to have 510, like you said. So every piece of your gear... I mean, the total of it all has to add up to 510 yeah. before you can start farming gear for 600, correct? Or above 510? I'm not 100% certain on it. I just know these are the marks they have in the code. Okay. Um, so, so there's a specific uh, file called like HWM loot, high watermark loot, and it's your percentage chance of upgrading for every point you're at. So it's like at 510, here's your chance. At 515, here's your chance. At 520, here's your chance, so on and so forth. So upgrades your chance of actually finding higher loot, just uh, you know, having a higher gear score in general. That's what it seems to be. Yes. Okay. And then Cleo, have you ever gotten a 600 gear score item? Now that I have to ask you that. Have you ever? Yeah, there was able... actually a pretty funny bug where um, eventually, like, call it like a you would like ascend and like every single drop you'd get would be uh, 600 legendary and it would, like break the loot. <laughs> Or something. So, oh, which, wow. you know, leads to believe maybe it was a, a living thing and then they changed it. So, you know, I just want to preface this by saying a lot of this is like mostly theory crafted stuff and, and trying to piece together what's found. But, um, yeah, I mean, gear score is definitely um, important. And, uh, yeah, from from my testing, I, th I think it's, it's most likely a number that uh, you build up and it's, and it's probably saved. Okay, so you think if you have a thought of it, you know, once you have that 510 gear score, you can actually re-equip 450 gear score and still find, uh, you know, that tier 5, 600 gear score loot, possibly. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then Mark is saying you found kind of the opposite, but that's perfectly fine. Obviously, there's a lot to test and, uh, you know, Mark's data mined uh, something and we'll see what actually comes out because a lot of things can change very, very quickly. Um, and it's very interesting to see, you know, all these different people coming out there and testing this stuff during beta and alpha. And we never really know exactly what they're going to end up with on release is the only issue there. So I'm sure this gear score stuff could all change at release, but uh, definitely interesting to hear what you guys have to say there. I think, you know, like you said, 600 gear score definitely has, you know, an upside to it compared to that tier five, 500. So I think a lot of people are going to be grinding that, you know, once they get to that 500 level, they're going to be wanting that 510 so they can actually start finding that 600 gear because there is a lot of, uh, you know, upgrades to be had there. And there are, so outliers, I've been paying attention to the forums and someone had just posted um, they, so, so I think it's Captain Thrall, the final boss, or Captain Thresh. Captain Thorpe. Thorpe, Thorp, yep. thank you. Um, from, he's the final boss in the Dynasty Shipyard. Uh, he's been dropping some gear that seems way overpowered, like level 40 gear with 600 gear score. Oh, wow. I um, <laughs> haven't got lucky enough dope. to get that, but that doesn't sound uh, too balanced, I would say, but wow. So I think there's some adjustments, some tuning to go through and We'll, we'll see what rolls into launch. But yeah, there's another guy who got 588 gear from him at, at like mid 40s. I've been thinking maybe they jack the numbers up for beta just to get people to test some stuff, you know? It's possible, yeah. Keep people interested. Yep. Well, it's definitely and a possibility. What, what are you it saying? also could, 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 could be a mistake. I had, I had yeah. been told uh, beforehand that they kind of capped gear score to 600 last minute. Uh, previously, the goal was going to be 625, and then you could get crafted gear up to 650, and then they kind of scrapped all that and put 600 as a cap and leave themselves room to expand. Because similar to like any other sort of living game, there has to be room for vertical growth. 
No, exactly. I think that that makes a lot of sense. We'll see what does come out and release. I think a lot of us are excited about that. Uh, just hearing, you know, 600 gear score is insane. Obviously holding, you know, 300 to 400 to 500 gear score throughout most of the game in my playtime, it'd be great to finally get uh, my hands on something that had 600 gear score. Uh, so the next topic is going to be probably one of the most, uh, you know, interested I guess, topic out of all of these amongst a lot of people. And I think that's going to start us out with some of those unreleased weapons. So let's start with some of the unreleased weapons you don't, you have, I guess, the least information about, and then work our way toward obviously that void gauntlet that a lot of people have just been recently hearing about. Sure. Um, let me pull up my weapons thing real quick. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I think some of these weapons, I mean, a lot of people are going to understand that they're going to come out and, you know, I'm assuming there's going to be some balance problems right in the beginning. That seems to always be the, you know, the case. If you ever played a MOBA like League of Legends or any kind of game where there's characters or, and skills involved, there is going to be some balance issues when the, these, uh, you know, these weapons release. And I think uh, we just have to be patient when they come out. I think a lot of people are excited about these things coming out, but you have to be, uh, you know, patient when they do, because, you know, it's going to take a lot longer for things to come out and, uh, you know, new content to come if we aren't, uh, you know, giving them just, you know, more feedback when they do come. So I think that's a big thing to note um, on that uh, topic of new unreleased weapons. And I, I think we also have to prefix um, or preface with uh, a bunch of information about the alphas. Uh, I know they're NDA'd. I wasn't partic didn't partake in them. I, I haven't signed an NDA. Uh, but a lot of these weapons are holdovers from the previous weapon iteration. Uh, so before the game is what it was today, there were no skills or abilities. You had a light attack, a heavy attack, and a special attack. So a lot of the weapons, meaning the, like, the long sword, or a great sword, um, the pistol, the club, uh, they were in the previous versions of the game, uh, but they have not made it into the new system that has skills, abilities, passives, ultimates. So your guess is as good as anyone if those are actually going to ever make it to the actual game itself. I feel I, I get the feeling that they're going to work towards incorporating it, especially like they spent time. So my favorite one is probably the longsword, and how weapons are broken apart is it's by melee, magic, ranged. And then it's broken down into individual weapon types, examples being axes, clubs, hammers, knives, pole arms. So yep, there are pole arms, uh, swords, and then it's broken down by one hand or two hand. So there are two handed swords like uh, the sword heavy agent, the sword corrupted, the sword angry earth, uh, long sword viking. And these are known as variants. Uh, they're individual unique models of a weapon. And some of these weapons, like daggers, only have their base variants. And what I mean by that is there's a gray version, a blue, or green, blue, pink, and legendary. There's no unique, there's no special skins, there's no dropped content for it. Uh, just sort of your base level, we worked on these. Yeah, that makes sense. And what's the, I guess, the first one you have a little bit more info about? Or you, the one, I guess, that you think is going to be, you know, possibly in, implemented, you know, in the next six months or year time frame? Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, there's a handful of weapons in the game files, and they aren't, they don't all have code references, which is what I'm trying to base this on. Uh, so four weapons in particular have references in the code to actually being worked on, instead of just like, hey, we've got models, we've got unique variants, uh, but if it's not listed anywhere, there's no UI, there's no lo localization text for it, it's probably not going to be anytime soon. Uh, so there is a reference to holding a mace, and also I can't figure out how to find... Um, the attribute for the weapon. I don't know if it's going to be maces based on focus or strength or, or whatnot. I've tried to do digging and I just can't figure that part out yet. Okay. So mace, though, you do believe, um, you know, does have skill lines that is coming to the game sooner rather doesn't, than... Doesn't have skill lines, doesn't. but there okay. are there are entries in code for equipping a mace, essentially. Or having a mace as a weapon, like a tooltip for a mace. Okay. Um, and then the daggers, the daggers have their, you know, all weapons have two skill lines. Yeah. So the daggers have their two different skill lines. So those are a little bit farther else. along than uh, the mace, then? Potentially. There's no actual ability data for it, but it does have localization data for the skill tiers. And the one is blades, and the other is stealth. Okay. Well, that's cool. Wow. Blades and, and stealth, are, I'm sure a lot wow. of people are going to be excited about that. Obviously, yeah. an assassination-type build uh, is not really in the game currently, um, so I, I would assume daggers would kind of bring that. There's things kind of close to it, but nothing like what daggers sounds like it would be. So. Yep. And, and interesting, so, so they are 
I, I did a bunch of digging on this. They are listed as plural daggers throughout the game code, but they are under the one hand knives. So I don't know if it's just going to act like a one hand and potentially dual wield. I don't know right. if, if you're just going to have a single dagger. We have no idea what to expect when it comes to this stuff. Is the shield listed under one hand as well? Under the uh, file? Like shield, the- correct, one hand. So that could be potentially a thing. I mean, you could have the dagger might be able to go on the offhand slot. I don't know. Yeah, is that something that makes sense to you, Marks? By while looking into this stuff, is it possible that you know the the dagger could go into the offhand like a like a shield does? I can't say. There's no information on it. No. Okay. No. All I can say is that it's listed under one hand. So interesting enough, like the club, uh, which is also what the maces are, uh, has a one hand and a two hand variant. There is a great club and there is a single mace. That'd be cool because that'd be the first weapon where we really had the opportunity to wear a uh, you know one hand um, as well as a two hand in the same kind of uh, sense of the same weapon. I guess you know being a mace. Um, that definitely be if, neat. I don't know if they're going to bring that over. I don't know how that would go. Would they be two separate weapons like a mace, a great club? Would they have different skills? Would the skills be one is one hand, the other is two hand? There's a ton of possibilities, and I feel like they haven't really figured this out yet. Right. Yeah, do you have any thoughts on this, Cleo? Any any thoughts on the dagger and the mace possibly coming? Obviously, dagger sounds like it has you know that assassination possibility or you know that stealth game, and I think that's something. Uh, I guess something that you know a lot of us are looking forward to, uh, something you know more of an assassination build that's not really out there right now. Yeah, as long as the stealth, I think wasn't true stealth, and maybe right. it was more that ashes kind of um, or hey halo type stealth where you can still kind of see an outline. Like a camouflage, um, maybe, instead of a kind stealth. Because yeah. Yeah. I think the in-game stealth mechanics are so rich sometimes, and open world especially highlights it. Um, the other night in Brightwood, we were prone, crouched behind a river, and then I don't know where the enemy crossed, and we ambushed them with their pants down in the river. So I don't know what it would mean for balance to have a, a true stealth class, but uh, the game definitely needs more variety. And as long as you can see them, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, and then in regards to the mace with, with one-handed weapons, I mean, there's... Just such a massive balancing issue to have with weapons like that. Like, like if you used hatchet with a shield, it might be too OP. But right. I know that's actually been a massive request in the community. Is you know, can we equip these one-handed weapons like rapiers, hatchets, and, and, and you know, possibly maces, daggers, and use shields with them? So be a lot I don't balance. know if the game's ready for it now, but yeah, yeah it definitely uh, is going to be interesting. And then something else to note is um, there's a lot of angry earth uh, monsters that uh, use. Uh, dual blades also you can see some ancient uh creatures do that and they do a dash attack and a leaping jump and it looks like some of them apply poisons as well so yeah it might be interesting to see if they draw inspiration from that like they have other weapons in the game sure yeah that'd be very cool to see some of that stuff do we have any uh new information on any other weapons obviously getting closer to that void gauntlet being the closest to release um do you have any thoughts on or not really thoughts do you have any you know new weapons you want to talk about marks about you found Yes, and I just wanted to bring up, so, um, like, in, in terms of axes, there's a one-hand axe, the hatchet, the two-hand axe, the great axe. Um, with ma- magic, there is a staff called the Angry Earth Staff, but I don't know if that's a new weapon or just a unique variant. Um, and I feel, I, I have been told uh, that they are going to try to prioritize a new ranged weapon to even out the board. So there's three weapons of each kind. Uh, but I haven't necessarily found the data to back that up. But in searching for that, I did find animation data for a weapon called the Blunderbuss. The Blunderbuss. So this would be more of a shotgun, or do we, do we know any of the abilities or any of the uh, you know animations that go along so, yeah, with it? The, the animations are named for their abilities. So it's like Blunderbuss ability, net shot, claw shot, splitting grenade, mortar shot, azoth shrapnel blast, vortex shot. <laughs> Wow, so those are some some pretty cool names actually there for some of those shots. Um, it doesn't sound like mo- I mean, based on what you just said, it sounds like they're all shots though, and not much mobility involved with that blunderbuss. Is that? Do you guys have the same feeling about that, or is there any mobility you think that needs to be put in with something like a blunderbuss that's probably strength based, maybe a uh, you know a strength based uh, ranged weapon that everyone's been looking for? Strength based weapon would be pretty sweet. I gotta say that right now because I feel like they need it. I think it would be pretty interesting. Yeah, everyone was thinking for the longest time it was going to be crossbow. But, I mean, I mean, shotgun's pretty cool, too. 
Yeah. So crossbow is an interesting one. It looks like it's a unique variant of the pistol. At yeah, the um, a lot of the wasp mobs use that. You can see it now in the game. The um, the like the they look like witches almost, and they have that torch and little pistol crossbow. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And the lost. Right, so now we want to jump into. Uh, I guess. Do you have any more information on the blunderbuss, or do you want me to skip over to the next one in line? Uh, yeah. So the the final weapon, which seems to be the furthest along, it's got skill tables and um, weapon abilities, is the void gauntlet. Uh, so I haven't been able to actually pull image like the models out of it i do see there are variants i haven't quite figured out how to open the 3d models yet uh, but there are localization strings and descriptions for all of the abilities and passives for the void gauntlet so to me that means it's a pretty complete weapon maybe some balance tweaks but that's kind of it do you have any suggestions on when you think this could actually possibly come if it does come you know in the start of this release do you think i mean obviously the weapons that are you know here now are probably going to be the ones that's you know come at release but do you think it's going to be you know a month out or do you think it's going to be more of like you know they're going to wait six months before they release their next weapon i have no idea i can't say for sure but i i don't think it'll be at launch or early on i think it'll be down the line uh, especially to try to bring players back in if, if they start having a dip in player base um it seems to be the furthest along in terms of weapons. And like I said, I, I've been told they're trying to figure out how to get another ranged weapon in to even out the board. So Void Gauntlet may get put on the back burner for something like the Blunderbuss or something else. Yeah, yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Well, it's cool that they're that far along with the Void Gauntlet. Obviously, a lot of people want you know that next weapon because we've seen these weapons uh, you know develop for a little while now, not too long, because there has been some you know unique ones like you know the spear wasn't always here. Um, there's been a couple that just recently came over, like the rapier and uh, a few others. But do you guys have any thoughts on the Void Gauntlet? Have you guys read their abilities at all? And uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I've been studying the abilities um, recently since it came out on Reddit here. And uh, I don't know if anyone plays League of Legends. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Cassidy. Right. A little bit. <laughs> it does, yeah. um, there's, you know, you have Void Blade, which is a hybrid melee ability that uh, converts your basic attacks to melee. You summon a blade of void energy. I mean, really uh, interesting stuff with a lot of different modifiers. I mean, the game has been needing more more slows, more roots, um, and kind of ways to deal with um, kind yeah. of the, the all vacuum that light and armor, stagger. all that light yeah. armor rolling around. Yeah, I definitely. I think that's a great a great way to say it. Is this is, this could be a you know something that helps with all that? Yeah, I mean, some of these abilities are great, you know, and um, just think of a hybrid melee magic weapon is just really, really good on them to do that. Everyone kind of thought Ice Gauntlet was going to be it, but it looks like it's going to be the Void Gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, also some good healing. You know? Yeah, no, I definitely, I was yeah, looking at that, it does have like healing Like we were saying involved. earlier, it's, it's, it's one of the few self-healing weapons that are out there. Yep. And also group healing, too. I mean, it's, yeah, it's true. Cool it's how a, these two it's, trees I'm reading through yeah. give a lot of customization if you want to do maybe can play a more tanky of build. Right, like a support and damage at the same time. Do a lot with it. I feel like there's a lot of customization that you could really do with it. Yeah, and, and I kind of like book. now they make you pick, you know? Like you can't do yeah. it all. You're really going to yeah, have to pick sure. what you want to do. Yeah, it's definitely important, obviously, when balancing weapons that, you know, have that, you know, sharp, really strong, I guess, point where you have to pick which way you want to go with things. And I think the Void Gauntlet's definitely one of those weapons that's going to make you do that. So do you have any thoughts, any final thoughts here, guys, before we wrap this up? Uh, that, the one last thing I was stuck trying to find is uh, the paths, like the skill paths for Void Gauntlet. Um, I, I called it Path 1, Path 2 on the post, but I edited it. I've now found that it's called Annihilation and Decay. Annihilation and Decay. Okay, well, uh, that yes. definitely sounds sweet. That would make sense looking at it now, yeah, because you have Void Blade, which would probably be the middle ability or the defining ability of the tree, and then the two side abilities as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very excited for all this release content that we seem to be getting very, very quickly. Uh, another thing I notice is, you know, a lot of people talking about how great New World, uh, you know, the developers have been at actually adding this new content so quickly. So obviously, you know, like I said, dungeons were not talked about very much at all. You know, they didn't mention that was even going to be a thing. They threw together six dungeons, you know, very, very quickly. And now, you know, the fact that they're working on so many more already, five unreleased and uh, mutators, as well as, you know, new zones and 
a lot of great things coming out of New World. And I think, you know, a lot of people are going to continue to be excited and drawn to this game as, you know, time goes on. I don't think it's going to be a game that, uh, you know, hits for six months and you're done. It, it looks like the content's going to keep coming. And I think that's a very, very important thing. I would like to see more about the PvP side of things. Uh, so hopefully you can find some data on that in the future, Mark, because I am excited for PvP when it comes to this game. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like much yet on PvP uh, that you could find. So, so th there's some interesting things. And I, I just wanted to start with, like, I, as I see it, I, I, I work in software development. I don't think a lot of this unreleased content is going to come out pretty quickly. I think it's going to be this ramp of, like, launch, qual immediate fixes, potential quality of life updates. Then maybe they start thinking about content update one. And that's probably going to be the end of the year. Right, and I think that's the way, way to go about it because obviously a lot of us would rather have you know those balance fixes, the bug fixes, the glitch, you know the glitch uh, run glitch or the you know roll glitch or whatever else glitch that you're dealing with. You know everyone's dealt with it, everyone's tired of it, so everyone's going to be excited that they do focus on that kind of stuff and then come out with content releases, like you said. But I've, I've played a lot of MMOs. I've played a lot of betas. I think this is in a fantastic shape for launch, and I really hope it's a win for AGS. I feel like they need one after like eight, nine years of being a company without a game out. No, I definitely agree with that. Do you guys have anything to say, Cleo or Ralph? Kind of got all in this one. And in terms of, so I did manage, I, I was searching for, I see other people talking about small-scale PvP, that this is really where the game shines and they should focus on it. There is a thing in the game code called Battle Arena, but it seems to be more about an automated Twitch channel showcasing events and stuff going on, not necessarily a coliseum or uh, battlegrounds. Oh, I was going to say, you got me excited there for a second. A lot of people talking about the idea of you know adding PvP, maybe 1v1s, 2v2s, or 5v5s, like little but, bit of a ranked arena. <laughs> I have been... Uh, I signed up for the New World forums. They have this awesome group called Developers, and you can see who, which developers are posting what where. They also have a group for community community managers. And uh, I can't recall who, but today one of the developers had mentioned, like, hey, uh, in response to a post about small-scale PvP arenas, uh, we are actively thinking of new ways to keep the community engaged, and we are excited to tell you more details soon. So there is potential that they are working on this and may have something in the future. Well, that's definitely good to hear. I think a lot of, a lot of the, the PvP side of things are... Uh, really starting to understand that there needs to be a little bit more, I guess, PvP in the actual world. Obviously, the open world is great for PvP, but a lot of people complaining about maybe not enough incentive. I think they're doing a great job of, you know, having those drops on death. You know, maybe it doesn't come from that person, uh, you know, precisely, but it, it does give you, you know, weapons on death, and it gives you, obviously, that great weapon XP that we've talked about in the past. Uh, so it'd be great to see, you know, PvP arenas come into the game at some point in time, just to satisfy, you know, the PvE side of things, as well as the PvP. We don't really need open world PvP mandatory in any zone specifically. A lot of people mentioned that. I think it'd be cool. Uh, it's not needed if we have that, you know, PvP arena where people can actually just go to have PvP at any point in time during the game. So there's a lot of good, different cool ideas out there. Uh, we'll see what really does come about. Um, yeah, additionally, there, there, I did data mine some, again, who knows if this content ever comes to the game, um, but there are references to PvP leaderboards and seasons, like season one, season two, so on and so forth. So that could be some sort of like cosmetic reward or overall leaderboard for specific teams, but there doesn't seem to be much more than that, so who knows what will happen. Wow. Well, the, thank you so much for all the awesome things you had to say. If you guys have anything else to say, now is the time. I'm going to cut us off here as we've been running for a little while, and I want everyone to make sure they have the time to watch the entire video. Um, do you guys have anything else to say, or are we going to call it there? No, just thank you so much for having me yep. on here. It's been a great talk, and uh, really been a pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. This has been fun, Graphic. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I will have the links down below for, like I said, guys, everybody in this chat. So Alf, obviously, like I said, one of my buddies we've been playing for a while. He just started a YouTube channel recently. I'll have that link down below. Uh, Cleo Mance, uh, or Cleo Menitz, I always call him Cleo Mance instead of Cleo Menitz, but he yeah. is a guy that uh, he's been streaming for a while now. And you know, like I said, 5K hours in Alpha. He knows probably the most out of any of us uh, for here when it comes to the Alpha. So definitely take advantage of that and follow him on Twitch. And, uh, and then we have, like I said, Mark's Mark has been doing a great, really job at data mining, obviously, alongside a few other people, I'm sure, but, um, just a lot of great data that you found Mark. And I can't thank you guys enough for coming onto the show, talking a little bit about it. You're very welcome. Yeah. And welcome. I want to say this has been a community effort. I'm not the only one doing this. There's a, a group of us that are kind of trading secrets back and forth and figuring this out together. And it's been a lot of fun. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Make sure to quickly subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and like the video. I'll see you guys in, like I said, that next one.